The new M2 Mac Mini might not look all that different, but the most important changes aren't on the outside, they're on the inside, with Apple giving us a powerhouse desktop and a minimalist box that not only has fixed some problems I had with my previous M1 Mac Mini, but has also shifted my expectations of what I expect out of a budget computer, not only for the Mac lineup, but for the entire PC industry. However, it's not all perfect, and there's some things about this computer that I think need to be changed after one month of use. Now, the Mac Mini design hasn't changed at all from its M1 predecessor, and for that matter, it hasn't changed much in the past 10 years. For the most part, that's fine. The Mac Mini was introduced as a stripped-down version of the Mac that took away the built-in screens or expandable hulking desktops. The philosophy of this product has and remains a small, clean box that can be placed in any setup and get you a computer running Mac OS at the cheapest possible price point. The M2 Mac Mini embraces this wholeheartedly and even stronger than Mac Minis from the past few years. That's thanks to a nice price reduction of $100, bringing this down to just $599. And you would be forgiven for stopping the video right here and going, okay, here's a spec bump upgrade with $100 off the M1 Mac Mini. I'm not gonna waste 10 minutes of my time watching Greg rattle off specs and junk. Well, Mr. Know-It-All, Mr. Smarty or Miss Smarty, you don't know Jack and you don't know Greg because this upgrade has fixed a lot of pain points that I had with the 2020 model that make it a much better computer. Go ahead and do a quick Google search of Mac Mini Bluetooth issues and you'll find websites, threads, and complaints of this issue going back years and years complaining about spotty Bluetooth connections. This affected Bluetooth headphones, mice, and keyboards resulting in frequent dropouts of these accessories, especially when using multiple Bluetooth connections. Well, after one month of use, knock on wood, I have yet to experience any Bluetooth dropouts like I did on my M1 model. I don't know if Apple changed something internally or just the addition of the better Bluetooth 5.3 spec was enough to fix these issues, but hey, for me, they seem to be fixed, and if you experienced these issues before like I did, I hope I can say that this new Mac Mini finally fixes a lot of those Bluetooth flaws. Now for the base level Mac Mini again, it's like the same thing, right? So it's unchanged from that 2020 version. So it's still two Thunderbolt ports, still two USB-A ports, one HDMI port, a headphone jack, and an ethernet port. It's got a decent port selection for a Mac, but it's still not a huge selection for a desktop computer. But Apple does at least give you some options here. So they do offer a new Mac Mini. It's, it's more pricey at $12.99, but that is decked out with an additional two Thunderbolt ports. And if you do find the port selection limiting here on the base model, there are a lot of accessories or hubs that can add some much needed ports to this Mac Mini to fix those shortcomings. But in the modern 2023 era of this computer, I mean, I think the port selection is probably gonna be fine for most people. But unchanged with that port, is also the limited display support that this M2 Mac Mini offers. It still only natively supports only two external displays, one running through the Thunderbolt port and one running through the HDMI port. Personally, these days, I'm usually a one monitor setup kind of guy, so this really hasn't affected me. I think two monitors would be the most I'm ever going to use at once. But again, I thought that the uh, multi-monitor support was going to be kind of fixed when Apple introduced um, these new M2 chips and, and that just didn't happen. But with that being said, I gotta say like this design, it's fine. It's been here for a while. I, I kind of like the design of the Mac Mini in a way. It's a very clean looking computer and I always like seeing on my setups, but I would have done something more with the design here. Like what I'm talking about is functionality wise. We've seen Apple come out with uh, the Mac Studio now and that added ports onto the front and they are very convenient. Uh, obviously you can get that hub, like I mentioned, which adds ports to the front and, and that does fix some of my issues, but it would be nice to natively just have like an SD card slot on the front and like one USB-A port or one USB-C port. And I, and I really feel like that would solve uh, a lot of my issues with the design of this M2 Mac Mini, but hey, it's just a small desktop box. What more can you expect, right? There's not too much to complain about here with the design. Of course, the biggest internal change to this M2 Mac Mini is the M2 chip itself. Now, I can go on and on about how this M2 chip performs with single core performance and multi-core performance, and some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about, while other people will think I'm speaking to them in Latin. The performance benchmarks are here for the people that care about them, and yes, this M2 Mac Mini, as you can see, performs very well with CPU and GPU related tasks, especially when you consider its very budget-friendly price point. However, 
it isn't even the CPU speed charts or how fast this thing can export video in Final Cut Pro that really has me impressed. It's just how fast and responsive everything is on this base level machine. The cheapest Mac performs almost identically identically for everyday tasks as their most expensive Mac, and maybe even perform slightly better thanks to the speedy single core performance on the M2 chip. So like if you're opening an app, it might actually open faster because of that faster single core performance. So if you plan on getting this M2 Mac mini for anything that is below what I'll call professional work, and examples of that would be things like web browsing or having multiple tabs open, having multiple apps open at once, word processing, Excel sheets, watching or listening to media, storing files, browsing photos, all the things Mac users do on a day-to-day -day basis. This thing is just fast, it is instant, and this base model I have here does not need to be upgraded to take advantage of any you're like, you're not gonna see any speed advantages doing those basic tasks if you upgrade this computer in any way, at least for the most part, right? Like we're just talking in basic terms, this base level model can get through anything an everyday user would throw at it. That's maybe not something you could say about every Mac in history because there was a time when even for basic tasks, you would worry about the performance of these machines and specking out a Mac would result in a better experience for many of these everyday common tasks, but that appears to thankfully be a thing of the past. And this is the case with every Apple Silicon computer. It's one of the best things about these machines that really differentiates them from the old Intel processors and really offers a unique experience of optimization probably not found anywhere else in the entire computing industry. I don't think, and feel free to correct me if I am wrong here, I don't think there is a better computer out there for the price point that would offer you as quick or as responsive performance on a whole. I just don't think that computer exists. And if you are the type of user that wants a Mac desktop and, and you're only using those base level features, you should probably stop watching this video. It's Apple's best valued Mac ever. And if you want a Mac desktop that isn't an all-in-one, this is a no-brainer purchase. However, computing needs evolve and the world is constantly evolving and changing and it may seem like a niche audience, but I feel like media production is booming with the rise of short form content like on TikTok and, and even longer form videos on YouTube now, like, like the platform you're watching this on. And I feel like more and more people expect their computers to be able to handle these types of media tasks, whether that's video editing, photo editing, music production, or even like live streaming. And I'll say it again, for this price point, no other computer is going to be able to handle how well this thing can go through like Final Cut Pro timeline or how fast and responsive it is in photo editing or a lot of these pro level apps. For a budget setup, this M2 Mac mini, it's nothing short of amazing, but it's not perfect. I can only speak with my own workflows and my own personal use case, but for example, like say if I'm doing 4K video editing, this thing is generally fast, but there is a breaking point with longer timelines and multiple streams of 4K video. That breaking point is probably because of the eight gigabytes of memory, which is a hard limit on this base model machine. So whenever the memory needs to swap with the SSD, you'll experience some spinning beach balls and you'll have to wait for the program to catch up and then once it does, you're usually smooth for a little while and then you might experience another breaking point again. So as much as I love this machine, don't be fooled. It's not perfect, it can still be tripped up. However, a lot of those flaws can be fixed with more money. So for pro level users, my biggest advice is to consider some upgrades like adding in an extra eight gigabytes of memory, which will greatly reduce some of the memory constraints that the base level model has. And I'm sure you've also heard the controversy of the slower M2 SSD speeds on the 256 gigabyte unit. And while the drive speeds aren't painfully slow, it's still an NVMe drive we're talking about here, not a slower SSD SATA drive, and certainly far, far away from the slow spinning disk drives of uh, older desktop Macs. But still, if you want faster storage speeds, well, you might wanna consider upgrading to that 512 gigabyte SSD model. Not only that, but you also get double the storage. 256 gigabytes for a desktop, it can feel pretty constrained, it can feel pretty limiting. Although, you need to be careful, because as you approach these upgrades, adding on one or two upgrades is fine, but a few of them, and this mini computer starts to get pretty expensive. And with a few clicks on the configuration page, you could be awfully close to the price of a 
base level M2 Pro Mac Mini, which may be the better choice for you if you value even faster multi-threaded CPU performance or require faster GPU performance or want nice add-ons like the HDMI 2.1 port or the additional two Thunderbolt ports to really get the maximum amount of I.O. that this computer could potentially offer. And I know when you're working with a really constrained budget, believe me, I've been there before, I know some of this can kind of feel a little bit defeating, like, okay, I found the perfect base level computer, but I need, I need a little bit more storage or something like that. And, and I want storage upgrades and memory upgrades. Then, then you start like running into this problem where it's like, well, now what do I do? But here's my advice. If you're like a pro on a budget, as a desktop computer, I think the best upgrade path is to just worry about memory and expand storage with external drives that can be easily plugged into the Mini to increase its storage at a fraction of the price. Because unlike a laptop, where using this method is a bit more painful because you're constantly shuffling the machine around, on a stationary desktop, it really doesn't matter all that much. In fact, when I was first starting out, with my YouTube career, this is how I made the most out of my Macs because I could only afford the base level machines at the time and I get the specs for like the CPU or the memory and then if I could increase like the memory on them, then I would. And then I would start to expand uh, my storage starting with external drives rather than spending large amounts of money on Apple's upgraded storage because I needed more storage to store my video files. I can never have enough storage. So getting those external drives when I first started out was a great way for me to make this happen. And that's why when I started out, I always chose a desktop Mac because that was the easiest way to make sure that external storage was always plugged in. Also, another thing you do have to consider when getting the Mini, I do, I do wanna list all the negatives. If you don't have things like a display, a keyboard, or a mouse, well, you need to factor in those options into your budget as well. Of course, there's so many options for third-party accessories that even if you need to buy everything for this Mac Mini, if you don't have a setup already, it, it probably still is the cheapest Mac on the market. You may have to make some sacrifices in like some areas in, in the terms of quality you want, but you could probably spec this out to still be the cheapest overall Mac instead of something like a MacBook Air. And listen, as much as I or other channels can nitpick the additional cost of accessories or the expensive upgrades on Apple's end for their storage and memory upgrades, or show you chart after chart of how the 16 gigabytes is better than the eight gigabytes, or how the faster SSD is gonna give you slightly better performance than the slower SSD, ultimately, a lot of these charts are just pointless because there's never been a Mac this capable at this low of a price point. Anyone telling you to avoid this computer probably doesn't have another solution for you anywhere near this price point. And as we covered, it's not only great for regular users, but this thing can scale up to become a really competent Mac that is going to be great for creators or professionals on a budget. The possibilities and creativity that this little box can empower are exciting. And I really wish that when I started my YouTube channel, I had something like this as an option because I have personally spent a lot more on a lot less. And now you don't have to. You can buy this and you can make something great with it or in just enjoy a hassle-free computing experience. But those are my thoughts on the M2 Mac Mini one month later. I think it's a great machine. I like this base model machine. That's the one I've been using for my all my tests and, and for this review. And hey, if you need to spec it up beyond the base level machine, don't feel guilty about that either. This is just a really great computer. Well done, Apple. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully this video was well done. If it was, please give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed and hopefully you liked it enough that I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, everyone.